Welcome to the Swayam MOOC course, NGOs and Sustainable Development, Unit 3, Module 21, Renewable Sources of Energy for Sustainability. Learning Objectives By the end of this module, you will be able to learn the different types of renewable energy, comprehend the applications of various renewable energy sources, discern the urgency to switch over to renewable energy sources. The bottom line, renewable sources of energy. Natural resources are gifts from the environment that can be utilized as energy sources. The renewable energy sources are wind, solar, biomass, hydro, geothermal to name a few. Natural resources that can be restored or replenished more quickly than they are used up are known as renewable resources, the sun, wind, water, earth's heat, geothermal and biomass are all examples of renewable resources. They have attracted particular attention in recent years due to the crucial role they can play in replacing the non-renewable energy sources that is fossil fuels in the production of electricity. They are also environment friendly being non-polluting in nature and most important being renewable in nature. Since the late 1980s, fossil fuels have been employed to generate the energy that we consume today. Wood and other renewable energy sources have been used considerably for a very long period of time prior to the industrial revolution. With the advent of industrial revolution, we slowly moved over from renewable energy sources to fossil fuels namely coal and oil. Until the 90s, there were only two major forms of renewable energy which is solar and wind. Since then, energy was obtained from other sources of renewable energy namely geothermal, biomass, tidal, wave, ocean, etc. Nations all across the world are focusing heavily on renewable resources that can take the place of fossil fuels in the generation of electricity. Reliability and cost are two major concerns that must be overcome for the successful generation of electricity. To evaluate the viability and optimal application of renewable energy on a large scale, extensive feasibility studies are being carried out. Green energy or in other words clean energy is frequently associated with renewable energy. For instance, trees are a renewable resource since they can be replaced by planting new trees after they are being cut down. The International Energy Agency which is IEA predicts that by 2024, 30% of the world's electricity will come from renewable energy sources up from presently 26%. The various types of renewable energy sources are solar, wind, marine, hydro, geothermal, bioenergy. If it is solar, the source is sun, if it is wind, the source is wind. Marine energy is obtained from waves and tides, hydropower is obtained from water, geothermal is obtained from the earth and bioenergy is obtained from biomass and waste. There are various technologies that are using each of these energy sources and majority of the application is for electricity or for heating and cooling purposes. The energy inputs are the traction electricity, mechanical, heating and cooling purposes and it starts from the primary production starting from solar, biofuel, solar based desalination, biomass residues or indirect energy inputs. All these will lead to post harvest and storage of these energies, transport and distribution of the energy to the consumer, processing and finally selling it to the consumer at the retail level. So, let us see the importance of renewable energy. A global transition to 100% renewable energy in all sectors be it power, heat, transport, desalination has been proved to be technically and financially feasible. So, what prevents us from using renewable energy? In contrast to fossil fuels which are concentrated in small number in a few places in a few countries 
renewable energy is available in plenty across the globe. Energy security, climate change mitigation and economic benefits are all significantly increased with the deployment of renewable energy as well as energy efficient technologies. More emissions are produced by fossil fuels when we are going to compare the electricity production from renewable energy sources. In most nations, renewables are now more affordable and it creates three times more jobs than fossil fuels. Renewable energy can be produced repeatedly as needed using the natural resources that is the sun, wind, rain, tides, etc. Usually it regenerates naturally. In addition to seeing an increase in their percentage of in the total energy consumption, renewable energy sources now account for a vast majority of the newly added power plant all over the world. In four areas, renewable energy can be used for electricity production, for hot water or space heating, for transportation. In addition, off-the-grid energy services are also produced from renewable energy sources. Power generation as of 2021 more than 25 percent of the electricity is found to produce or is found to come from renewable energy sources. For example, the solar collectors collect trans the PV cells helps in gathering the sun energy from the sun and it converts it to electricity using the setup. Heating and cooling. In many nations, solar water heating is a significant contributor to renewable heat, especially in China which accounts for nearly 70 percent of the world total. A portion of the hot water requirement of the estimated 50 to 60 million households in China are met by these systems, the majority of which are installed in the housetops or in hotels at the rooftops. Over 70 million households around the world have access to the share of the total installed solar water heating capacity. The utilization of biomass energy nationwide in Sweden has surpassed that of oil. Heat pumps are becoming more and more important since they supply both heating and cooling while also flattening the energy demand curve. Thermal renewable energy is also expanding quickly. Renewable energy is making up 10 percent of the energy that is used for heating and cooling purposes. In transportation, we find there is an increased use of electric vehicles and this is used to replace the oil or the gasoline which is being used by the vehicles. There are different types of renewable energy sources, natural resources. The seven top renewable energy sources as of 2020 are found to be solar energy, wind energy, bio energy followed by ocean energy, hydro, geothermal and hydrogen energy. Now coming to solar energy, it is one of the most plentiful and readily available energy sources in the earth and it is obtained from the sunlight. So there are solar panels present which absorbs or gets heated up with the solar energy, solar heat and this heat is then radi radiation is taken up and then it is sent to the charge controller which helps in inverting or converting this into electricity and it is supplied to the homes. In fact, throughout human history it has been used to heat water, dry and prepare food and also to warm the inhabitants. The outermost section of the earth's atmosphere receives very little solar radiation. The majority of it reaches the earth's surface with the remainder being absorbed by the atmosphere. In order to gather and transform the solar radiation into heat energy that can be used for a variety of purposes, different technologies have been found and some of them have been found to be technically and financially viable. Solar photovoltaic called as the solar PV devices contain solar cells which converts the sunlight or the heat radiation into electricity. In other words, solar technologies can use solar PV panels or solar radiation concentrating mirrors to turn the sunlight into electricity. Solar energy can hence be classified as solar PV or solar photovoltaic devices 
and the second is solar thermal where solar heat is used for energy purposes. As the picture indicates the solar thermal receives uh, solar PV receives the sunlight and it gets categorized into photons uh, electrons and because of this photons and electron movement which is used to get electricity. Some of the applications of solar PV are we can find it in solar panels uh, are found in the rooftops of uh, even remote areas in huts uh, where it can be used for street lighting. It can be used for home lighting where electricity generation or the electricity connection is not present in remote areas. We can go for solar PV panels, we can use it for street lighting, we can use it for water pumping, for power plant, for traffic signals, for railway stations where enormous amount of electricity can be generated using the solar panels. It can be used on the rooftops as in the place of uh, roofs, the panels can be tiled up in a particular angle so that the heat can be taken in by the solar cells. Further in recent times we have also uh, they have also developed flexible PV cells which can be placed anywhere. Remote areas such as in Mexico there are solar panels present which helps in converting the solar heat into electricity. We can also use solar PV cells in spacecraft in uh, international space stations where there is no possibility of having a line connection to give electricity solar PV cells come in handy. In recreational use we can use solar cells where ships can be mounted with the solar panels and using the solar PV panels electricity can be generated in the ocean. It can be used in the residential areas, it can also be used in commercial areas. Architectural integration of PV modules is found in this building where the entire building has been panelled with solar PV modules. So, we can imagine the extent of electricity that is being generated in this solar building. So, if the building is able to generate this, this amount of energy in terms of electricity, this building can apply for the lead rating. Now, solar thermal energy utilization techniques are also present solar water heating, solar drying, solar cooking, solar parabolic collectors. Some of the examples are presented where in solar thermal heating there is a panel present in the panel the solar radiation falls and the, the tubes get heated up and water flows inside the tubes. The water which is present inside the tube hence gets heated up and it goes into the overhead tank and this overhead tank which now has uh, warm water can be used for uh, domestic purposes or if it is very hot it can be used for industrial applications. So, this is a, a schematic diagram how water which is shown by red color and orange color flows inside the tubes and the water gets heated up because of solar radiation. The various types of systems that are present in solar thermal are flat plate collectors, evacuated tube collector and concentrating collector. So, depending upon the type of system the temperature of the water is also present. So, in a flat plate collector the temperature of the water will be around 70 degrees and hence the type of application we can use is for domestic and industrial water heating or for drying or for space heating. If it is evacuated tube collector again the temperature is around 100 degrees. So, it can be used for industrial water heating. If it is a concentrating type of collector then the type of temperature of the water will be around 100 to 400 degrees. So, it is very much used for industrial purposes. So, the typical temperature range and efficiencies of various heating systems are in flat plate hot water heating it is around 40 to 60 degrees, evacuated tube water heating it is 50 to 80 degrees, evacuated tube with other fluid and low concentration it is around 100 to 200 and cylindric paraboric corrector it is around 100 to 400 and parabolic point focus where the entire sun's radiation is brought to a single point in such instances the temperature of the water can rise up to 1000 degrees also. So, as the type of uh, system varies 
the cost also varies and so is the efficiency. So, we find that as we increase down the columns, we find down the rows, we find the efficiency of the system also improves. Uh, just as the cost improves, efficiency also increases. So, depending upon the need, we can choose a particular type of system. So, this gives a schematic representation of a solar cooker where we can cook our household dishes using the solar energy. So, the items can be placed inside the solar cooker and based on the radiation, sun's radiation, the materials gets cooked. Um, the second uh, diagram is the schematic diagram for a um, solar still, where it is a, like a pond and uh, the, solar the solar radiation falls on the surface and the water which is present inside the pond gets heated, it vaporizes and uh, it condenses at the top layer and this uh, water droplets that are condensed are taken out and they are the distilled water or in other words pure water is obtained from the solar still. The solar uh, thermosiphon solar water heater is present in the figure. We have a parabolic trough where uh, it can be used in deserts or in uh, remote areas where a series of parabolic uh, troughs are present and the solar radiation is captured in these troughs and we are able to convert solar energy into electricity. If you are going to have a small tube at the center where we have water flowing, then we are able to generate both uh, electricity as well as hot water. So, um, it is possible using parabolic trough to have both uh, hot water as well as electricity depending on the design of the parabolic trough. Parabolic dishes is again a concentrated uh, point focus where we can get uh, water which can get heated up to 1000 degrees as we have already stated. So, this is a solar dish which is the world's most efficient device for the conversion of solar energy to a grid delivery electricity. Then we can have a solar thermal dish collector. All these are uh, equipments, instruments that has been found to be economically viable and technically viable also for the generation of electricity. And in many countries, uh, we find that all of this have been commercially exploited and commercially deployed for generating electricity. This is a solar power tower where um, there are mirrors, parabolic mirrors, uh, reflecting mirrors placed all around the tower and at the center there is a water present uh, which is or a uh, electricity system present which helps to convert huge volumes of electricity from this numerous number of reflecting towers. Next coming to the second renewable energy source which is the wind energy. It is a plentiful source of renewable energy and the sun and wind are in direct interaction. When the sun's heat is absorbed unevenly by the various surfaces of the earth including the ocean and the water masses, then wind is generated. Typical types of uh, wind are windmills are the vertical axis windmill which uh, rotates around the vertical axis which is one type of windmill. The second type is horizontal axis where uh, around the horizontal plane the blades rotate, then uh, it is called the horizontal axis windmill. Commonly horizontal axis windmills are used as compared to vertical axis. However, if it is horizontal axis, then uh, it can be located only in certain areas where the required amount of wind is present. Whereas, if it is a vertical axis windmill, it is a costly windmill, but however, uh, wind energy can be generated, it can be located anywhere even if uh, wind is not present. So, uh, a small comparison a vertical axis windmill is very costly, but it is highly efficient and it does not depend on the direction of the wind. Whereas, in horizontal it is less efficient, but majority of places because of it is cheap we find uh, horizontal axis windmill to be present and it is oriented to the wind direction. When the sun is shining during the day, uh, air above the land warms up more quickly than the air above water. So, the warm air rises, expands, it is replaced with cooler air. This results in the wind movement. So, wind energy is converted into mechanical energy by the generator turbines, which then turn out electricity. 
So, uh, a typical wind energy plant is given here where as the turbines rotate it goes into the turbine as the blades rotate the, the energy is passed on to the turbine and from the turbine the, uh, the energy is moved to the generator which converts the rational energy into electricity. So, this electricity uh, electrical energy then is moved to the transformer which converts it from uh, a certain watt a certain voltage to a higher voltage and then from the transformer it goes to the grid and from the grid it goes to different households or to the industry. So, wind turbines silently rotate the sizable blades that are fastened to the shaft of an effective electric generator by harnessing the momentum of passing air. In wind turbines, wind passes through the blades, wind blades and um, an electric generator is driven by the blades turning. This produces power. In the past, windmills used this energy to generate mechanical work. For instance, the windmill's rotating motion is used for water lifting. So, in many, uh, if we visit Denmark, we will find or many postcards show us this picture of uh, a windmill uh, in a household which is used for lifting water from a well. But today, the windmills are used for generating electricity. Further, uh, hybrid power systems are also found in recent times where multiple sources are used to generate electricity. For example, the PV modules are set up to receive the current to receive the energy from the sunlight and convert it to electricity. Similarly, the windmills are also present which uh, through the rotation of the blades uh, generates electricity. So, this uh, both energy is retrieved is received and is regulated and there is conversion happening from which it is sent to the generator and to the grid. Now, let us see the advantages of a windmill. It is an effective environmentally favorable source of renewable energy. There are no ongoing costs associated with producing power. Wind energy however, has a lot of restrictions. Only locations where the wind blows for the majority of the year, we can use it for wind energy setting up of wind energy farms. Additionally, the wind speed must be greater than 15 kilometers per hour in order to keep the turbine spinning at the required speed. So, wind energy cannot the windmill cannot operate if it is at a lesser speed. Similarly, it cannot operate when it is at a higher speed. So, an optimal wind speed is required to operate the windmill. In addition, there should be some backup infrastructure such as energy storage cells to meet the energy demands during a period when there is no wind. A considerable amount of land is required to establish the wind farms. The farm requires around 2 hectares of land to accommodate 1 megawatt of generator. The farm's establishment comes at a hefty price at the beginning. However, uh, after the plant has been set up, only maintenance cost is required. Furthermore, the towers and blades require a very high level of maintenance because they are being exposed to extreme temperatures, extreme weather conditions such as storms, rains, tornadoes, etc. The third type of renewable energy is the hydroelectric power. One of the first renewable energy sources that was being used is the hydropower and it has been used for thousands of years. Hydropower is the term for water based energy. Even before it was exploited to create power, it was a pioneering renewable energy source. With hydropower, electricity is produced by the mechanical energy of moving water. Hydroelectric power plants generate energy by turning a turbine that is powered by the water flowing by the rivers and the streams. The energy of water flowing from a higher elevation to the lower elevation is captured by the hydropower. It can be produced by the reverse movement or by reservoir movements. A big reservoir can be utilized to create a regulated flow of water that will drive a turbine producing power or by erecting a dam or a barrier which will help in creating uh, power by running the turbine. The ability to store electricity for use during times of peak demand makes this 
hydropower energy source a very interesting or a very viable energy source and it is more reliable as compared to solar and wind because it has got the capacity of storing the power. Now coming to the applications in order to supply energy hydropower reservoirs frequently serve as the source of drinking water, irrigation water, flood and drought control measures, uh, navigation services and energy. So, in addition to generating power a hydropower plant has several other uses. Hydropower infrastructure also has the potential to negatively affect the ecosystem. Because of this many people view small scale hydropower is better as against a huge hydropower plant because setting up a hydropower plant uh, causes damage to the ecosystem. Next coming to the tidal energy which is another renewable form of energy. Tides are extremely long period waves that travel across the water as a result of the moon and the sun's gravitational pull. The rise and fall of the sea surface on a regular basis is what we call tides which originate from the ocean and appear as they move towards the coastlines. Since tidal energy is produced by the ocean's natural rise and fall, this resource can never dry up and hence it is called as a renewable source. Advantages are it is green, the tides are predictable, tidal power plant lasts a long time, there is a high power that we can generate from tidal energy, it is renewable in nature and most important it is a fossil free energy. It is predictable and it gives a consistent power, efficient at also low speeds and there is a long lifespan of tidal power plants and it requires a very low cost or very, uh, very little money to run the tidal power plant. Of course, it does have its own disadvantages, it is expensive to construct and it is available in limited locations. Tidal energy is usually generated at the coastlines. So, what is the distance to the grid has to be estimated because this energy has to be transferred to the grid electricity. So, there is limited useful period, aesthetics of the coastline is lost because of construction of the tidal power plant and equipment maintenance can be challenging because we are setting up the tidal power plant almost near the coastline inside the ocean. However, we have several tidal power plants established across the globe. The five largest tidal power stations are in South Korea we have the Siva Lake tidal power station, in France we have the La Rance tidal power plant, in Wales we have the Swansea Bay tidal lagoon, in Scotland we have the Maygen tidal energy project, in Canada we have the Annapolis Royal generating station. Next coming to the fifth renewable form of energy is a geothermal energy. From the Greek word geo it means earth and therm means heat. So, we have this word geothermal meaning heat generated from the earth surface or under the earth surface. So, we arrive at the geothermal energy. Geothermal energy makes use of the thermal energy that is available inside the earth's interior. So, geothermal power stations are located in 7 US states itself, they have generated uh, about 16 billion kilowatt hours of electricity during 2021. This equates to around 0.4 percent of all the utility scale power station uh, power production in the United States, that is the capacity of a geothermal energy. Deep below or near volcanic activity they are the potential locations for the geothermal reservoirs. By drilling wells geothermal energy can be used to pump the hot water or the steam to a thermal power plant. Then heating and electricity are produced using this energy. An electric generator generates power by using the steam to turn its turbines. Another technique to utilize the heat of the surface is via the geothermal heat pumps. They help with the heating and cooling by transferring the heat from the ground or the water into the buildings during the winter and similarly vice versa during the summer. Next coming to the sixth renewable form of energy is the biomass energy. 
organic material from plants or animals is referred to as biomass. Wood and wood waste agricultural products and waste which are mostly used to make biofuel herb and garbage such as paper, cotton, food, uh, yard waste, animal manure, sewage are all examples of biomass resources. When burned this energy releases heat the process of photosynthesis transforms the biomass resources into chemical energy by utilizing the solar energy. Even animal waste and used tires are also used for generating the heat. Burning this biomass produces heat and it drives the turbine and hence results in electricity generation. Bioalcohols like bioethanol and oils like biodiesel are examples of liquid biofuels. Bioethanol is an alcohol that is produced mostly from sugar and starch corpse by fermenting the sugar components of the plant materials. These include sweet sorghum, sugarcane, maize, all these are used to produce bioethanol which can be used as a very important liquid biofuel and also can be used for transportation vegetable oils, animal fats, recycled greases are also used to make biodiesel. In addition to being used as a diesel additive to lower emissions of particulates and carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons, diesel powered cars can be used and uh, it is a very important bio, uh, very important resource uh, fuel in the place of gasoline to drive vehicles. The most popular biofuel in Europe is biodiesel which is created by trans esterification of oils and fats. Gaseous biofuels are also found and uh, this is got from landfill gas, synthetic gas or from biogas. Burning biomass or biogas or biofuels of course results in heat but also results in uh, emissions such as uh, SOx which is uh, sulfurous oxides, nitrous oxide NOx and particulate matter. These are not advantages to the environment. So, care has to be taken when we use biofuels, biomass uh, as an alternative energy. According to the World Health Organization, nearly 3 billion people worldwide were affected by indoor air pollution because of biomass burning. So, care has to be taken when we use biomass. Though it is a renewable form of energy which can be easily replaced, however, when we burn biomass, we also we also release uh, emission to the environment. The seventh renewable form of energy is the ocean energy or the marine energy. The energy that is delivered by the ocean waves, tides, salinity, and temperature variation is known as marine energy or also the ocean energy. Ocean energy comes from the processes that use the kinetic and thermal energy of the ocean waves and the currents to generate heat or electricity. The development of ocean energy system is still in the infancy stage. Research is going on to make a commercial production, commercial production of electricity from ocean energy. However, prototypes have been started and uh, people are trying to establish the viability, the economic and uh, uh, technical viability using these prototypes. Theoretically, ocean energy could easily provide all of the world's energy needs. The world ocean generates massive amount of kinetic energy or energy in motion. So, electricity if we are able to generate from this ocean energy can replace to an enormous amount the uh, fossil and uh, nuclear energy. Wave energy acquired from the surface waves, marine current power obtained from the marine hydrokinetic streams and tidal power obtained from the kinetic energy of moving water are all included under the forum of marine energy. The oceans are close to many if not majority of the world's most densely populated area and it holds huge amount of energy. So, it is left to us researchers to find out how to tap this enormous amount of ocean energy so that we are able to viably use it for our electricity needs. There are further emerging technologies that are slowly coming up to replace the fossil fuels. They are 
cellulosic ethanol, heart, dry rock, geothermal power, marine energy to name a few. These technologies have only limited commercialization and they are very much in the research stage. So, to conclude we have renewable energy from various forms uh, biomass, solar, hydrogen fuel cells have now slowly emerged. We have hydroelectric energy, we have tidal energy, geothermal, wind, wave. In recent times people are trying to have hybrid power system so that uh, if one energy fails we have another energy to tap on and we have a continuous supply of energy and a clean form of energy. Now let us see the advantages of renewable energy. It is a free source of energy is one, one of the important advantage of renewable energy. As industry expands so does the number of jobs that are created and tomorrow's renewable energy is the solution. The second advantage is renewable sources of energy uh, increases the access of electricity in developing countries and uh, also in remote areas we can take this energy. Third, the fact that the major portion of the renewable energy can be considered as a green energy, clean energy is one of the biggest advantage because majority of the renewable energy does not have any emission except biomass. Nuclear energy produces or emits very little carbon dioxide, so it can be categorized as a carbon free energy source. However, nuclear energy since it is obtained from uranium ore, we treat it as a non-renewable energy. Carbon dioxide and other dangerous pollutants are not released by using renewable energy which is a very important factor. However, there are drawbacks in using renewable energy, uh, it cannot be relied on. So, reliability is very important factor which is detrimental in the use of renewable energy and researchers have to ensure that they are improve the reliability of renewable energy sources. We cannot produce solar electricity or wind energy when the sun sets. So, during those times what is the energy that we are going to replace with? So, what is the type of energy storage devices that we are going to bring in that will capture the energy that was collected during the day and gives it out during the night when the solar energy when the sun is not there. So, the third drawback is the fluctuating production capacity, substantial energy storage systems are needed. Using many renewable uh, technologies uh, we need to adapt it to suit the supply chain so that it offsets when the production is not possible, when the capacity utilization is not present. Some renewable energy sources including biomass do not experience this, this type of supply shortages. Although uh, both of these resources have, un have a certain detrimental environmental impact. Additionally, some renewable energy sources including wind and solar farms are a source of complaint to the nearby residents because they do not like to have these uh, enormous solar farms or wind energy systems close. The reason being of the noise or uh, the uh, heat energy that is getting emanated from these huge power stations. Now, let us see the global trend towards renewable energy sources. Politically and economically the environmental movement has shifted its focus to renewable energy sources because whatever said and done we cannot depend on fossil fuel indefinitely. We need to switch over to renewable energy sources because they are renewable in nature. The issue with employing renewable resources extensively is that they are very expensive and uh, as compared to fossil fuels and in majority of cases additional research is required to ascertain they can be, they can be uh, commercially used. In addition to having a finite supply uh, energy from fossil fuels harms the environment and this itself pushes consumers and producers to move towards renewable energy options. The Kyoto Protocol which was agreed in 1997 was the first significant worldwide agreement to reduce carbon dioxide emission and combat global warming. So, to achieve this it is essential to move over from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources. World leaders gathered in Paris in 2015 
to make carbon reduction commitments and to emphasize greater reliance on renewable energy sources. So, what are the incentives for using renewable energy? Alternate energy consumption can be encouraged by giving incentives. Fossil fuels for instance are subject to heavy energy taxes. So, putting taxes on fossil fuels will induce consumers to move towards renewable energy sources. As a result, renewable resource pricing may become more appealing, more competitive. People might like to use renewable energy sources because of the heavy tax on the fossil based fuels. By investing in environmentally conscious and sustainable business, green funds which are investment vehicles, uh, we can further promote the use of renewable energy by creating environmental awareness. These incentives seem to be working, this is witnessed by the results that we see. Approximately 12.6 quadrillion British thermal units were produced by renewable energy during 2021 according to US Energy Information Administration EIA. This accounted for 12 percent of all the energy that is used in US. In 2021, US electric power industry used about 59 percent of the country's renewable energy and around 20 percent of the nation's electricity was produced from renewable energy. So, this indicates that people are moving over from fossil fuels to renewable energy. So, government mandate on the one side incentive for the use of renewable energy on the other side will encourage people to use renewable energy to a larger extent. Some of the facts that we see with regard to renewable energy are by 2030 the global demand for solar PV would be around 5 percent. We will be able to use 95 percent renewable energy to meet our demands by the year 2050. By 2050 Price Waterhouse Cooper uh, consultant has stated that Africa will be entirely using renewable energy for all its use. These things are very encouraging to see. The cost of solar PV panel is expected to drop by 99 percent in comparison to fossil fuels. Renewable energy generates three times more jobs. Investment in renewable energy is now found to exceed the investment in fossil fuel. The market for renewable energy has now increased and it is valued to around 250 billion dollars. All the trends show an encouraging picture. However, all this rests with people. We need to change, we need to adopt renewable energy if we want to move towards a sustainable future. Now, let us see some questions and answers in this module. Why is renewable energy important? Generating energy that produces no greenhouse gas emission from fossil fuels reduces the extent of air pollution. Diversifying the energy supply, reducing the dependence on imported fuel, all this is an encouraging sign and it also creates job opportunities as well as economic development for the country. Is renewable energy sustainable? Yes, sustainable energy is one that meets the growing demand of today's people without compromising the needs of the future generation. All renewable energy sources are sustainable in nature. Question 3. What happens if we switch to renewable energy? A transition to renewable energy is good for the people and for the planet earth. It will mitigate the climate change by reducing the greenhouse gas emissions. It will improve human health and the environment will become more healthy. It will decrease the air and water pollution. It will support jobs and also there will be economic development. So, overall there will be a holistic improvement in the planet earth among human life, aquatic life, animal life. So, it is necessary that we switch over from fossil fuel consumption to renewable energy consumption for sustainable development. To summarize, in this module we have learned the different types of renewable energy, comprehended the applications of the various renewable energy sources, discerned the urgency to switch over to renewable energy sources. Thank you.